Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Models Memories Weekly, episode 63. Models Memories is a show about nothing and is filmed in front of a live studio audience. This is a show where I talk about my painting, modeling, and worrying experiences from the week. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three DVDs a week and you stream every single night. How could you possibly have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This week, I actually got a ton of wargaming or war painting done, a little bit of personal painting, which is very rare for me, but I painted up a squad of B1 battle droids for the game Star Wars Legion, and they turned out great. Really, I wanted to experiment more with oils because I want to learn the ways of the oil. And having done a lot of, or a fair amount of oil painting, I'm, I don't know, 30, 40 hours into my journey, maybe a little bit more. It's, it's not easy, but it is, there's a lot you can do with oils that's very interesting. I've painted well over a thousand miniatures, and so I'm pretty good with acrylics, and I may have to paint a thousand models with oils to get pretty good at oils, but I think it'll be worth it. I think I'll find that there would be some tasks I'll want to use oils for and some tasks I'll want to use acrylics for. But these guys, I mostly used acrylics. Um, I actually used a lot of, I actually used mostly army paint or contrast paint on these guys, and it turned out really, really nice. Uh, one trick I discovered, or I guess I didn't discover it, but I was watching some uh, Wargamer Pete videos and he, in his undercoat, did a little bit of sponging to create chipping and then laid on all of his colors. And so I did the same thing and I think it turned out very, very nice on these little, these little battle droids. Roger, roger. These, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. They're a little tiny bit dark. I think that comes from me just not knowing oils that well and how, prop, how to properly mix up an oil wash, but I'm pretty satisfied with these guys. I think on the next batch, I might go a little lighter with the colors and then probably just mix them up so that they all look coherent. But yeah, nine battle droids, a wonderful kit to put together. If if you're a big Star Wars fan and you are like, you like the battle droids, just, just get a box of B1s and put them together. They are tons of fun. I had a great time building them and then I had a ton of fun painting them. I probably painted them up in under three hours. It was quick but very, very happy with those. And then something came in the mail for me that I bought, God, months and months and months and months and months ago, but it is this, a Rogue Trader Retro Amble. This is a model I have coveted for a very long time. I love it. And now that it's in my hands, I love it even more. It's so derpy and weird. I love it. And the paint job isn't terrible. I mean, it's t it's three colors. It's brown, purple, and a wash, but I think it really works. And when it's my turn to paint this, I think I'm actually going to keep the body one color and just play a lot with value. Because I think this all one color look actually does kind of make it look a little bit natural like an animal. God, now all I have to do is get a hold of the Blackstone Fortress Amble. They sold for like five weeks and then poof, it was gone forever. It was a cool model though. But yeah, the dreaded Amble. Ah, I love it so much. The channel was ever to have a mascot. It might be, it might be this model. Games Workshop probably forgets that they sold this model at one point. And look at that beautiful 40 millimeter square base with goblin green and sawdust flock. Ah, it's so perfect. I absolutely love it. And I'm excited to have it in the collection and I will definitely be painting it up. Ah, B1 Battle Droids, Amble. What could be better? Games Workshop showing off almost a dozen new video games. Warhammer Skulls Festival of Video Games. Every reveal from Warhammer Skulls 2022, blah, 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 blah. All right, starting off with number one, we got Warhammer 40,000 Dark Tide, which looks like a first person shooter. It looks a lot like the Necromunda game that just came out. It looks, it looks good. I like first person shooters. Looks like it'll have some fun characters. Um, what, I guess you're some Imperial guard fighting some traitor guard. So neat, I like it, it's neat. Maybe I'll play it, why not? Uh, next up, Rogue Trader. This is a compelling cast of companions and exciting turn-based combat awaits. Dedicating this and dedicated RPG fans can get involved with Rogue Trader early with a Founders Pack launching today with Warhammer Skulls 2022. Oh, cool. I'm not going to play it, but uh, I'm a little confused by it. Rogue Traders aren't necessarily warriors. Um, I know there was like a board game Rogue Trader. I wonder if it's based on that a little bit, but 
the the in-game picture has me interested because you've got like this beautiful ship layout where maybe you can walk around and like access different terminals and that seems cool i love a little a little like resource management but then the splash art for rogue trader is a, a band of merry misfits fighting some dark eldar which makes me think it's just gonna be like a a, a, a fighting game well, not a fighting game but like a a classic like role-playing game where you fight the you know you move your guy and then you fight the baddie and then they move their guy and then they fight the baddie i mean a space wolf a sister of battle a psyker a rogue trader an eldar and maybe an, another psyker an astropath in the background i'm sure it'll be good it's fine it's neat um but uh, i i think it would almost be more interesting to have a like a resource managing rogue trader game like you're actually a rogue trader skirting the edges of humanity kind of dealing with the Xenos and actually like trading with them a little bit and doing very scoundrelly things. But who knows? I haven't played it. I don't know anything about it. Total War Warhammer 3 expansion pack. Uh, I have heard it's a very good game. And it's cool that's getting an expansion. Next up, Warhammer 40,000 Bolt Gun. And I thought, Bolt Gun, that maybe that, that might be something. It is a sprite-based retro-looking first person shooter and it looks glorious i love it it's so ugly but that's the point return to the halcyon days of the 40,000 second edition and sprite based shooters with arak digital's bolt gun a true blast from the past cast in the modern warhammer mold this single player fps is dripping with nostalgic charm from intensely lethal weapons to pumping tunes and combines fast-paced action with all of the guns and gore you'd expect from the 41st millennia. I am, I'm gonna play this game. I am pumped. This, it looks like so much fun. And it looks like it's not taking itself too seriously. It looks like you just run around and shoot stuff. I hope that that's a health pack right there. Ah, uh, I love health packs. More games should have health packs. Regenerating health is boring. You just hide in a corner for a minute. Health packs are great. Ah, I love this. It looks wonderful. Ah, and then Space Marine 2, they showed off like three new pictures. This still looks great. Don't know when it's coming out. Uh, new game, Warhammer 40,000 Warp Forge. It's a card game. Who cares? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not one for online card games i barely like in-person card games but at least you, you know you're talking with a buddy and you're laying your cards you're setting your trap guards you're activating your monsters who wants to play a card game online i mean i know there's like massive community of people who do but uh it's just it's a crappy card game who cares it's got the art that you can see in any of these books behind me next up warhammer 40,000 shooters blood and teeth and ah. Uh, People are gonna be so mad. It looks so cute. I love it. Uh, people are gonna be upset because it looks really fun and silly and people don't like it when Warhammer is fun and silly, but it looks really fun. It's a 2D side scroller where you're just hopping around as it looks like you're, oh, I hope you're, you're, are the orcs not fighting the orcs. Maybe I should read. Can you say wah, get your Umi stomping boots on and grab a fistful of Daka. Okay, yeah, it looks like you're playing as the Orcs. Your intrepid boys will be shooting, chopping, and having an all around wonderful time against hordes of enemies. This looks really, really fun. I haven't played a side scroller since I was a little kid, but this, this looks really cute. I like this a lot. <laughs> you're gonna crump the Umis. Next up, Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector. The Adversarius pick up their flames and march to war in the next fully playable faction for Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector. Oh, so this is already, it's already a game that exists in the world. Um, neat. I like the Sisters of Battle. This game looks fine. Uh, it, it looks very good. Uh, it looks probably like a, like a strategy battle game. Yeah, it looks good. It looks neat. Probably won't play it. And, <laughs> and of course, World of Tanks. Uh, World of Tanks is getting some tanks inspired by Warhammer. It's weird that they're inspired by, like, why not just port the Warhammer tanks into World of Tanks? Why take tanks, real world tanks, and I guess 40 k them? I mean, I get why, because it's easier, because you don't have to make new tanks, you just take the tanks you already have and give them a color swap. People like World of Tanks, so cool. Eh, eh, I won't play it. Um, <laughs> there's Tacticus, which, what is that? <laughs> 
There's a game coming out, an app game called Tacticus, which is a hex-based strategy game that looks fun. I've seen games like this that people get a kick out of. I don't know if it's for me, but eh. Neat, there's a cute little trailer with actors who don't know what Warhammer is pretending to play this Warhammer app. Very fun. And the Horus Heresy Legions new expansion, Titan Death. So you can add some Titan cards to your dumb app-based card game. Please leave a comment about how much you love app-based card games. Because uh, I don't. But neat, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that orc side-scroller and the uh, the, the first-person shooter pixel game. It looks so cute! Ah, I can't wait. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Honestly, I'm more excited for the, the sprite FPS than I am for Space Marine 2. <laughs> ah, I love it. It's very cute. It's very Doom. I love it. Very cute. Cool. Video games coming out. Love it. But speaking of games that, well, those are games that were licensed by Games Workshop. Now to talk about games that are made by Games Workshop, I want to talk about Horus Heresy. Because I saw, do do do, Spiky Bits had an article confirming the prices of the launch stuff. So this is a Spiky Bits article, um, and it says that the prices are confirmed. I don't know who their source is, so I suppose take it with a grain of salt, but all of it looks pretty accurate to me. The Horus Heresy Age of Darkness starter box is going to be $299, which is in fact under $300, which is what Games Workshop promised us it would be. Uh, $300 is really, really steep, but it seems to come with a lot more stuff than the last $300 box Games Workshop showed us, which was the, uh, the Ash Wasteland box, so... Whatever, 300 bucks, it looks pretty chock full of stuff. And luckily it does come with whipping sticks. I love a good whipping stick. <laughs> you haven't seen those probably since Dark Vengeance. I think Dark Imperium came with the plastic, the plastic ruler, which is honestly better because the whipping sticks are just for whipping. Then uh, if you order it from the Games Workshop web store, you also get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cheap pop metal tokens. Um, Don't buy it from the Warhammer web store to get the eight tokens. If you can, get it from a playing little game store to get a nice discount or just to support them. Uh, the Games Workshop, the Games Workshop main doesn't need your money and you don't, you don't want these six little tokens. Uh, and then this is what I forgot about, but the Liber Astartes, the Horus Heresy Codex for the Loyalist chapters. So yeah, we're still doing codexes. And this codex is gonna be $70. And then the Liber Hereticus containing the nine traitor legions is also going to be $70. Ah, uh, I know Games Workshop is addicted to their books. And I, I had a fleeting dream, a hope, a hope against hope that maybe with this new game, they would dip their toes into maybe not being horrible and selling books with the rules in them. But it looks like for Horus Heresy, there's still going to be books. The Legion of Startes Special Weapon Upgrade Set, $42. A little pricey, you get 60 guns, whatever. Uh, the Heavy Assault Weapons Pack, 20 weapons, also $42. Again, pretty pricey, but it's, it's, it's not the end of the world. The Kratos Heavy Assault Tank is $125. That seems pretty steep because I don't believe that this thing is that much bigger than a Predator. Maybe it is, it does look kind of big. Maybe that's not insanity, but crossing that $100 threshold for a tank that's not like a super heavy tank kind of kind of bums me out. Weirdly though, the Demos Pattern Rhinone, the pattern of Rhinone used by the Horus Heresy is $47, which is $3 cheaper than the old as dirt Rhino kit you can buy off of the Games Workshop web store right now. So I wonder if that's a mistake or if it really is going to be $3 cheaper than a normal Rhino. I mean, if anybody out there is on the market for Rhinos, just buy this one because it looks a little nicer and it's probably made with fresher molds that aren't almost 25 years old. And, oh, they're gonna be selling Ezek Araman, the 30K version, 33 bucks. I think we haven't seen him uh, since Burning of Prospero box sets that they made a few years ago. And do they have the other? No, okay. Ooh, and you can get the Horus Heresy bookmark for $18.50. 
Damn, what a steal. Don't, don't get the Horus Heresy bookmark. <laughs> Okay, that's that's about what I expected everything to be, and uh, it was it's rough though that all of the Legion rules aren't going to be contained in the main rule book. I feel like they probably could have been, but they decided to go codexes. So whatever. It also says it's the Loyalist Legion Astartes Army book and the Traitor Legion Astartes Army book, but there's other factions in Horus Heresy like Dark Imperium, Titan Legions. Um, so I wonder where those things are going to show up. Hopefully they're contained in these two books, but it's making me a little nervous that these just say Legion Astartes Army books. So we'll see. $70. Uh, not a fan, but it'll be fine. It's fine because I'm not going to play all his heresies, so <laughs> I'm just getting upset by on others' behalf. But speaking of Horus Heresy, I haven't taken a good look at the actual Horus Heresy starter box. So let's take a quick look-see doodle at that. Revealed new box set for Warhammer, the Horus Heresy at Warhammer Fest, and also leaked onto the internet like eight and a half months ago. <laughs> the Age of Darkness. The box comes with 40 Space Marines in Mark VI power armor, and I know there was lots of controversy about the Mark VI power armor. I get it. But all of the legions did use all of the marks of power armor. Yes, some legions used some more than others. Mark III, Mark IV, and Mark V were very, very popular with not a lot of Mark II and not a lot of Mark VI showing up in general, except for Raven Guard and some other factions. But I think it is perfectly fine to have Mark VI in your army. Because the space, we for some people times I think like we forget the Space Marine Legions were like 100 to 200 thousand plus Marines. These were monstrous armies. So even if Mark VI armor was rare, that might mean that a Legion only has 500 to 1,000 suits, which totally means that your 40 guys could be outfitted with Mark VI. I do hear the argument that if in terms of the lore. Mark VI was not that common, and it's gonna become very common because a lot of people are gonna buy this box and have their army full of Mark VI. And to that I say, it's fine. They look really good. It's, it's, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be fine, guys, I promise. <laughs> I promise. I know the knee pads are a little different, and that beaky helmet is iconic, but I think we'll all get through it. If we all work together, we can get past Mark VI power armor. Uh, which actually I think looks brilliant. I think it looks really, really good. It's so cool. It's been upscaled just a little bit, which makes them look like the really cool artwork that we've seen on the cover of Horus Heresy novels, which also, I believe, a beaky helmet appears on the first and third Horus Heresy book covers, you know, which maybe lends credence to there was Mark VI out there during the Horus Heresy, but uh, yeah, I love the beaky marines. They're super cool. I might get the Beaky Marines just to add to some add some to my chapter and maybe do like some old hand, old school kill teams. Next up, we got the Praetors, and I've heard I've heard some some naysaying about the Praetors. I think they look all right. I like the big sword. I like the big axe. They're definitely very embroidered, which is better for some legions, worse for others. But you know what? You always got your hobby knife and green stuff. You can always. Uh, you know, mess around and and clean some of that up if you want. And do some kit bashing, some swapping, add on some parts from your your Mark VI Marines. I think they'll look just fine. And honestly, I mean, their armor is so Baroque and like special. I feel like if you just added different helmets, they could probably pass as any type of armor mark. I like them, they look good. I think my favorite is the yellow guy with the Thord. Then we've got an actually really good Legion Contemptor Dreadnought. I haven't bought one yet somehow, probably because they're forge rolled and terrible, or you could get the plastic rigor mortis pattern Dreadnought, which was like, it was literally like a two piece clamshell model that you stuck together. It was not great, but I like it. It's gonna have weapon options and guns and probably be very expensive and I'll probably buy one. It's really, really cool. I would love to have a Contemptor pattern Dreadnought. There's a particular character Contemptor Dreadnought from the book Apocalypse that I would love to recreate in miniature form. So I'm really excited to see that. And the big ass Spartan tank bristling with LAS cannons, eight LAS cannons, which I believe 
is the same number as the Aquila pattern Land Raider, the special one that they sold for like a weekend. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same last cannon power as the limited edition super mega powerful Land Raider that they sold for 40K. Uh, it's a giant ass tank. I think it looks very nice. It's very nice that this model is no longer in resin. Uh, and it'll probably end up being a smidge cheaper than its original resin counterparts. And you also get 10 Cataphracti Terminators, and I don't know if these are new or the same old Cataphracts we had before. Either way, I think they look good. There's a weird thing with Cataphracti armor where it, they look really, really good lumbering, but as soon as they put their arms up, they look absolutely ridiculous. There's a, a Praetor for the Dark Angels that just came out a few weeks ago, and he's got like one arm up and then another arm up, and he looks absolutely ridiculous. But, uh... I think Cataphracti look great. I like how they look a lot. Neat. Uh, you also get templates, measuring sticks, dice, and the new rule book for Warhammer the Horus Heresy, which you'll be able to buy separately soon after the boxes get released. And it's probably also going to be $70 because the game, the 40k codex, or the 40k rule book is $70. So that's $70 plus $70. And then if you also play a, a Heresy, or if you also play a Traitor and a Loyalist Legion, you'll have to get that other book. And so that's $210. That's a lot. That's a lot for the three books. Uh, this set looks good. This set looks good. It it does kind of look worth $300. Like you get the models that you want and uh, you get the rule books and the stuff that it's not fun, but you also need to have. Uh, thank goodness they threw in some dice. Where else where in the world would I ever come up with dice? The only problem, the only problem I see with this box set is I would see this as very, very hard to split because, and the way that they've arranged it makes a lot of sense, but I feel like the person who ends up with the Spartan tank is getting the way better deal. I mean, the Spartan tank and all of those Terminators who want to be inside of the Spartan tank, I feel like are a lot cooler than just extra, extra Space Marines. So I feel like, I feel like it's gonna be really tricky to split this because either the person who gets the Spartan tank doesn't get much else, and then the other person just ends up with a ton of models, or it's kind of an uneven split where one person is getting more than the other person. And I, this box is meant to split. I don't know if you really, you should buy this just on your lonesome. I mean, you should always buy these boxes in pairs because it guarantees that you're gonna have somebody to play with and somebody to build your models with and somebody to get excited with. But just in terms of what you get, I feel like 40 Mark VI Marines is gonna be too many. Like, you know, I like the Mark VI Marines, but I would probably rather have 20 Mark VI and 20 Mark III just to spice things up a little bit. So just get, it's it's a hard box to split. I don't see how to perfectly split it. I guess you go by the picture and maybe you you let, you maybe maybe the person is really, really nice and buys the other person lunch or something to, to make up for them getting a little bit of a worse deal. Or maybe you give, you split the Terminators into five here and five there but then the other one person's getting way more models. It's hard, it's hard to split the box. Um, it's not perfect, but I think it does come with a good smattering of cool models. And this is this is the hard part about making a box like this because really probably what it should be is it should have been 20 Space Marines, 20 Space Marines, a Rhino, a Rhino, a character, a character. That would be a perfect box to split and start you on your Horus Heresy journey, but that's not a fun box. A fun box is one that does come with Terminators and the Spartan and the Contemptor Dreadnoughts. So, I don't know. Please let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this box and if you're planning on getting it or not. I am not, but that's just because I play so way too many games that I don't have time to play in general. And so I do not have time to play a different version of 40K. But, uh, but the Horse Heresy does look neat and I totally could in see myself enjoying it. I've been diving deep into the lore of Horus Heresy and there's a lot of really interesting stuff, except the Ultramarines. There's nothing interesting about the Ultramarines. I, I, I've read most, a lot of the lore for a lot of legions. I've heard good things about the Ultramarines popping up in the Horus Heresy novels, but just reading the wikis, there's nothing. They got nothing that makes them interesting. They're efficient. All of the other legions have really, really cool stories and things that kind of go along with them. You know, they have they have epic tales of adventure and you know things happening, good or bad. 
and the ultramarines got nothing. They're just efficient. They're like, oh, we're soldiers. We're very good at following orders and getting our work done. <sighs> boring. And speaking of things that are not boring, our Patreon. We have a miniature of the month club with STLs and physical models. We have tons and tons and tons of super cool terrain STLs. We also have behind the scenes videos, one extra episode of Eons of Battle a week, a live hobby hangout every single week, and more. But with that said, that's what Games Workshop's working on. They're gearing up for Horus Heresy. It's looking kind of neat. I'm having more fun with Star Wars and my cute little amble. Ah, oh, I can't wait to get this guy painted up. Anyway, thanks for watching.